What's up, everybody? It's the Wide Receiver Ranking Show from Jado the Fantasy Football. I am your host, Wyatt, here to break down my top 24 wide receivers for week two. I hope you guys are ready. I'm going to roll the intro. I'll be back on the other side. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. A couple notes before I get started. As always, check back through the week at jwbfantasyfootball.com for all of our rankings and any updates that happen to those rankings as some news comes out. With these rankings, these are for half PPR. Everything we do is based off of that half PPR. And like before, as I do these tiers, this is not, you know, when you see someone in a D tier, it doesn't mean they're a D player. It just means within the top 24, that's where they are in those tiers for the 24, bringing up my little handy dandy tier ranking here on the screen. Let's start off with my wide receiver one on the week. Probably not much of a surprise for anyone out there. Tyreek Hill playing against the Bills on Thursday night football. Tyreek Hill, despite getting detained by the police right before the game, still did his Tyreek Hill thing, had an amazing game in week one. I expect nothing less in week two. Miami's also always hot to start the season. Uh, they tend to slow down later in the season, but early in the season, we've got no worries for them there. Wide receiver two, a little bit of a shakeup for things with Cooper Cup as Puka Nakua is now on the IR. No more Puka Nakua for the next four weeks, at least. We saw in week one that Cooper Cup looks back to being that elite player he was a couple of years ago before injuries kind of sapped his 2023 season. He had 21 targets, 14 catches in that week one. Uh, I'm honestly expecting something at least similar in week two, getting that kind of volume. The Rams are dealing with some problems along the offensive line, and the way they've kind of dealt with that is that they are just doing really quick passing. <laughs> and when they do that, they're looking towards Cooper Cup often because he can get open pretty easily in the slot. Now, 21 targets, no one's going to project that right, but I do think that he's going to get plenty of volume, get plenty of receptions, uh, playing against the Cardinals this week. Not a defense you worry about. Sky is pretty high for Cooper Cup. I've debated putting him at wide receiver one. It's just, the only reason why I'm not is because Tyreek Hill, there's like absolutely no worries at all with the way Miami's playing uh, with the Rams. That offensive line could turn out to be a problem. I guess we'll see. Uh, but very excited for Cooper Cup in week two. This next one should be no surprise. Rounding out my first year with CeeDee Lamb playing against the Saints this week who the Saints have a solid defense, but not a defense that I worry too much about. And looks like there's going to be no Jake Ferguson this week as he's dealing with a knee injury that's probably going to hold him out. If that's the case. I mean, CeeDee Lamb is already a target hog in the offense. He might even be more of a target hog this week. Uh, no real concerns for CeeDee Lamb heading into week two. We're going to move on to tier A with Amon Ra St. Brown. Now, I'm not St. Brown disappointed basically everybody in week one, uh, putting up kind of a dud as Jamison Williams really, you know, took on the work there for the Lions and was their main receiver that first week. Now, I don't expect that to continue. I do think Jamison Williams, though, may have been coming along. He may actually be here and actually earn some volume. But I think that Amon Ron will still be the main target earner in that offense, expecting a bounce back week for him against the Buccaneers this week. Wide receiver five is Justin Jefferson, who started off with a really good game against the Giants last week as things were going. And really, the Vikings were able to take the foot off the gas and I think stop Jefferson from having an even better day. Still finished with a really solid five catches, 60 yards and a touchdown. But I think when you look at that stat line, you have to remember that the Vikings really did take their foot off the gas and didn't have to keep passing. With that said, this week, Justin Jefferson's playing the 49ers. This is a much different test for Sam Darnold than the Vikings, uh, as opposed to last week. I do think Kevin O'Connell is going to put them in a lot of really good places and try and get Sam Darnold to be the best that he can be, even against a tough defense like the 49ers. I'm not expecting them to come out guns blazing like they did against the Giants. But I also think that this is a game which would, they'll, should be trailing in, which means they'll have to pass at a very high rate, and I expect most of those to go to Justin Jefferson. Wide receiver six for me is A.J. Brown. Had a really good week one off the back of that really long touchdown catch he had there on Friday night football this week against the Falcons. A defense you do not care about. 
for stopping Philly's offense. Should be no worries here for A.J. Brown against the Falcons. I would say the only possible worry you could have for A.J. Brown going into this week is that do Devonta Smith have a bigger – does he have a bigger day than A.J. Brown? Do the Eagles just stomp out the Falcons so quick that they take their foot off the gas and A.J. Brown didn't get enough on for, on the way of getting them there? But otherwise, no real worries here for A.J. Brown. And that's going to do it for Tier A for me. As we start to get more and more information, I think it's much easier to break down these tiers and realize who the truly elites are from the rest of the pack, at least at this time. So moving on to Tier B, we've got Jamar Chase. If I can find him in here real quick, there he is. Jamar Chase heading off Tier B for me, playing against the Chiefs this week. Not the best week one, as the Bengals looked a little rough, and Joe Burrow, I think, you know, had a little bit of a rough game, was looking to check the ball down pretty quickly and often, and wasn't really pushing the ball down the field. Jamar Chase only got six targets, did catch all of them for 62 yards, so he wasn't a complete dud in your lineups, but it's not the Jamar Chase we're looking for. In this game, I know the Chiefs have a tough defense, they have a good pass rush, the Bengals are going to have no choice but to have to try and push the ball down the field if they want to have any chance of competing with the Chiefs this week. I'm thinking that the, they can get a little bit of a bounce back this week because of that. There's going to be some pressure on them. I hope that Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase can rise to the occasion. Also, doesn't look like T. Higgins is going to be back yet, and that should mean a little bit more target volume for Jamar Chase. Wide receiver eight for me is Garrett Wilson playing against the Titans. In week one, the beginning of the game started off really well for Garrett Wilson. He was getting fed by Aaron Rodgers. He was doing a lot of good things, and it kind of tapered off at the end as the Jets' offense kind of started to fall apart in the second half of the game against the 49ers, and the 49ers really started to lock them down. And he didn't end up having the best day, but I think we had the bones of what is going to be a really good season for Garrett Wilson as this number one target for Aaron Rodgers. I do think they have a little bit of that mind meld thing going on and uh, I'm expecting big things for, for Garrett Wilson. The Titans' defense is tough against the run, not that tough against the pass. Uh, I think this could be a really good week for, for Garrett Wilson. Wide receiver nine for me is Debo Samuel, who now that Chris McCaffrey is dealing with this calf, Achilles, whatever injury, it keeps changing in my opinion, it seems like, but they're all related. Lower body injury that's keeping him out. Looks like He's going to be out for week two as well. And as long as that's happening, we know that Debo Samuel is going to be a much larger part of the 49ers offense. He's already a big part, but when CMC's out, he's going to be a much bigger factor in the running game as well. Uh, Debo Samuel could easily see 20 opportunities in, in games without CMC just because of how many times he might run it and get targets. Now, 20, obviously, that's a lot for a wide receiver, but 15 is very realistic for Debo Samuel this week against the Vikings, no less. All right. Another one in this tier for me is Mike Evans sitting here as my wide receiver 10 playing the lions this week. Mike Evans, very good week one against that hapless Washington commanders defensive backfield. Uh, the Buccaneers offense basically did whatever they wanted against them. They're not going to have that easy of a sledding against the lions. Although the lions defensive backfield has been where they can struggle at times. Uh, and the Lions offense is very good. I would expect the Lions to be able to put up points against the Buccaneers without too much of an issue, which means the Buccaneers are definitely going to have to fire back at them. Expecting good things from Mike Evans this week. Wide receiver 11 for me is Nico Collins playing against the Bears. Nico showed why he is the wide receiver one over there for the Texans in week one. Uh, had a massive catch down the field for 50 yards. He went over 100 yards on the day was out there a lot was running plenty of routes doing exactly what we thought he might do and hoped he would do and this week against the bears they are a tough defense jalen johnson is a very good corner we'll see if he's actually going to shadow nico collins but also i kind of just don't care because of how good this houston texans offense is how good nico collins is how good cj stroud is how good bobby slowick is at designing offense I just expect Nico Collins to be good week in and week out. Last wide receiver I've got for this tier is Rasheed Rice going against the Bengals. What can you say? Slant Boy has returned. 
as Rasheed Rice. And while some people might use that moniker as a bad one, there are no issues for me for calling somebody a slant boy. In fact, we want slant boys on our teams. You're telling me you can get a, a talented after the catch wide receiver lined up against a linebacker. I'm going to take it every time. Yes. He's, he's running a limited route tree. We do not care as he went over hundred yards in week one. Shouldn't be surprised if that happens again. Rishi Rice, you know, without the suspension, that guy is really, you know, a second round rookie, uh, second round redraft pick. Um, he was that you were getting, you know, fifth, sixth round. Uh, really excited for Rishi Rice this season as he doesn't have to deal with those legal troubles. All right. We're going to move down to tier C. We're going to start off with Jalen Waddell, who was my wide receiver 13 on the week, playing the Bills as well. We saw last week how Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell can coexist together as both had big days. Uh, again, expecting more of the same against the Bills this week. A lot of the same things I said for Tyreek Hill work for Jalen Waddell. Uh, talented player, talented team, talented offense. Not much to say. Wide receiver 14 is Brandon Ayuk playing the Vikings as well with Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk, a little bit of a rough week one. He had some opportunities, but... Couldn't come down with the ball a couple times. Had a beautiful pass from Brock Purdy go off his hands in the end zone. I would say that's probably more just some he hasn't been practicing because of the contract dispute. Uh, jitters, rust, whatever you want to call it. Uh, expecting him to get back on track this week against the Vikings. Wide receiver 15 for me is Malik Neighbors playing against the Commanders. Malik Neighbors had a good first week out there for the Giants. Now, he was only second on the team in targets because Wondell Robinson actually led the team in targets. But I think that's one of those things where if you look at the game and you can see it as the game progressed, Leak Neighbors was actually leading the team. And it wasn't until late in the game when basically all Daniel Jones was hitting or throwing it at Malik or Wondell Robinson. There's really short routes just trying to move the ball at all costs, you know, in the fourth quarter. Whereas Malik Neighbors really is that wide receiver one for them. And looks really, really just talented out there. And I'm expecting good things from him. And he's getting the commanders, which is easily one of the best defenses to target. Wide receiver 16 for me is Devonta Smith, also playing the Falcons. Love to see him getting into the slot a lot more this year under Kellen Moore, getting him some much easier routes. There were plenty of stats from this offseason that showed Devonta Smith was actually better out of the slot than out wide. Him doing that is really big for his fantasy value. Wide receiver 17 for me is going to be Chris Olave as we move down into tier D. Playing against the Cowboys. Quiet week for Chris Olave in week one, but I think that was more just a problem with game script for the Saints as they got out to a really early lead and didn't have that many plays uh, while they like were gaining that lead as they did. So it's, it's so efficiently, like right off the bat, they had that long touch on Rashid Jaheed drives over, you know, they were using Alvin Kamara a lot and Chris Olave was still out there running all the routes, doing all the things. It's just because they were able to score so easily in other ways uh, while the defense focused on Chris Olave, it just wasn't his game, but I'm still expecting really good things for Chris Olave. Clint Kubiak has the offense actually using motion and play action and all these things we want for our offenses. I'm really excited for that for the Saints offense. I think we get a little bounce back here for Chris Olave in week two. Wide receiver 18 for me is DJ Moore playing against the Texans. Not the greatest week one as the Bears really struggled in that first week. Caleb Williams really struggled in that first week. Honestly, watching Caleb Williams play, to me, it seemed like he was having a little bit of like first game NFL jitters where he didn't quite have some of the touch on the, his passes that he needed to. He was kind of firing it in when he didn't need to overthrew some some receivers a few times. It seems like he just needs to settle down, settle in a little bit. I still think that Caleb Williams is really talented. You got to see glimpses of that in, in this, his first game. And while Keen Allen did lead them in targets, I think that, again, was this like more of a He's just trying to find a way to move the ball, complete any passes. So he's relying on the short area guy just to try and like make you know anything happen. Whereas we know DJ Moore is extremely talented and he's a much more big play wide receiver than Keenan Allen. I still think DJ Moore could be really good this year. Wide receiver 19 is DK Metcalf. He is playing the Patriots, who just shut down the Bengals. 
but I would say the Bengals had a hand in themselves being shut down. Seattle played against the Broncos last week, and the offense, honestly, was not as impressive as I was hoping under Ryan Grubb. It was looking a little bit similar to the way it was last year. Again, maybe this is a new coach adjusting to the NFL, wasn't really able to do all the things he wanted to do quite yet as he settles in. Uh, DK Metcalf, still really talented. Not the best week in week one. Obviously not a very good week at all. But he is a player who can take the ball to the house at any point in any given game. I still have some faith in DK Metcalf. Wide receiver 20 for me is Devontae Adams playing against the Ravens. A little bit of a quiet week one for Devontae Adams as the Raiders struggled a bit against the Chargers in week one. This is a tough matchup against the Ravens, but this is a game in which they are probably going to have to start playing in a negative game game script pretty early on as I expect the Ravens to win this one pretty handily. And if that's the case, we could get enough volume to make Devontae Adams worthwhile. Wide receiver 21 for me is Marvin Harrison. Ooh, now this one might be the worst week one performance that we had from basically anybody that we had real high hopes for. Just one catch, three yards, three targets, real rough. Now, he was out there running routes the entire time. I mentioned the good and the bad of the box score show. There was actually a play during the end of the game in which he ran past the defense. He was completely wide open, and Kyler Murray never saw him. And if you actually go back and watch that play, Kyler Murray takes a step back. Marvin Harrison is on the back side of the play, so it's not where Kyler Murray is initially looking. The pass rush gets there very early. Kyler Murray is thrown off his spot and is starting to scramble, and this is when Marvin Harrison is past the defense, waving his hand, asking for the ball. It was just, unfortunately, really never going to happen. Uh, if he would have caught that, if that would have happened, it makes his day a little bit better. It still would have been that good of a day. So, like, if I'm being honest, I do have some worry for Marvin Harrison right now. Uh, I still expect him by season's end to be a worthwhile player. Right now, I have to knock him down from where I was thinking before he could be a fringe wide receiver one pretty early on in the season. Now it's, I think he's a back-end wide receiver two uh, to start the season. And hopefully they get back on track this week against the Rams. Wide receiver 22 for me is Zay Flowers going up against the Raiders. Zay Flowers here, I think, is in a good spot against defense. That doesn't worry me too much. You know, the Raiders, they have a little bit of pass rush, and they played tough in 2023, but I think they were playing a little bit above their weight class in 2023. I'm not sure if that's going to completely continue in 2024. Zay Flowers also looks like he's going to be getting a lot of targets in this offense. A lot of short area stuff. Hopefully we get some deep passes to go along with that. But he's a good wide receiver here as low-end wide receiver too. Wide receiver 23 for me is going to be Amari Cooper. He's going up against the Jaguars this week. Tough week one for him. Uh, Could have been a better week if he hadn't dropped a touchdown pass from Deshaun Watson. Uh, Deshaun Watson looking absolutely terrible in week one. Hopefully he's able to put some play back together for himself in week two uh, to help Amari Cooper. But against the Jaguars, I do think this is going to be a game where they can get back on track a little bit. Amari Cooper is the main focus in this passing game, especially with David Njoku going to be out with a high ankle sprain, as it seems. And wide receiver 24 for me on the week is Michael Pittman Jr. going against the Packers. Now, Michael Pittman Jr. in 2023 lived off of this massive volume with Gardner Minshew at quarterback, with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. It's, there's not going to be nearly as much volume. Now, the the Colts do look to run plays at a very high rate, so even if they're not passing at the highest rate, they could get to a decent number of total passes, in which case Michael Pittman can still get there for us. But he's going to be really boom-bust. I expect him to be the leading receiver for the, for the Colts still but it's going to be a little little bit unreliable with Anthony Richardson at QB. Still, he's a talented player. This is against a team, you know, that isn't the best on defense. The Colts should be able to produce against them. So he's here as my low end wide receiver two, as my wide receiver 24. But that is all the wide receivers for me for this show. If you enjoy this show, please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to us. It's the best way to support us. As I said, 
You can find all of our ranks at jwbfantasyfootball.com. Make sure to check back there as the rankings get updated. You can follow me on Twitter at YatB underscore FF. You can follow JWB at JWB underscore FF. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to our free Discord, to our Patreon for all of our bonus content. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.